being a recreational player, I turned on the TV and those were the first voices I heard and they are synonymous with poker. I think their voices are fucking epic. I love the ex-wife jokes. I think, uh, you know, we might have heard enough of them by now. It's always been them, you know. World Series is on, you hear Norman Shea in the background, wham boozle, or whatever the heck he's gonna say, yeah. Without the efforts of those two guys, the opportunity for me to do what I'm doing and the explosion of the game and, you know, the, the range of programming that has ensued wouldn't exist, period, point blank. If someone had asked me 20 years ago, I would say, why would there be poker on television? Except television remains this, like, large landfill and you gotta just keep dropping more crap into it. You gotta fill it up every day. Uh, and so poker is among the things that helps fill it up every day. Here we go. Three, two, one. This moment is ripe for someone to come out from the shadows and turn a middling stack into a major one. Who you got? I got Joe Cabot. I would take him any 10-handed poker game. i take him in 10 anything. <laughs> this is uh, take two of our perfect one, right? Yes. Okay. Was it ever a goal of yours to be famous? No, it was a goal of mine to be successful at whatever I did. I guess I wanted to be a famous baseball player. Tried to get into a four-year school uh, to play baseball and uh, was kind of rejected. And so uh, the school I was going to, uh, UC Santa Barbara, had a radio station. My dad and my brother, older brother, were in broadcasting already. And so I walked in and uh, started my career. Ron McCarron has joined us now with a look at sports. It's time for the locals to get on the baseball field tonight, huh? Caught me pulling a thread, yes, I oh. did. Santa Rian did his run. After a while, I sent some tapes and started doing some fill-in work in San Francisco as a sportscaster. The station I was working for at that time was owned by ESPN parent company. And in the early mid-90s, I became one of their go-to guys to travel the country doing features on these oddball sports. Hello, everybody. I'm Lon McCarran, and we are glad you could join us for this celebration of skating. Yokozuna Akebono achieved a miraculous victory in the last summer basho. Barnes answers the Big Ten with the Big Ten. And David does bring tiles out, and he will play jam. It was a jumble, uh, but whatever paid the bills. When I came out of college and I wanted to do stand-up comedy, I had some mediocre sets, but mostly I bombed. Even when you walk into a Denny's and ask them how to get to Denny's, they say, oh, yeah, go down three traffic lights and you'll see it. Something about the Arlington. I don't know what it is. It was the most disappointing professional experience of my life. I could not believe how overwhelmingly mediocre or not good I was. I used to end with an impersonation of a Siberian husky smoking grass. It's actually much worse than it sounds. That was my closer. Hey, it's comedy. <laughs> I knew I wasn't going to make enough money doing comedy, so I took a job at the Washington Post, you know, just to get a paycheck every week. In 2001, I had like six or seven different series going, and it all went away uh, as kind of a domino effect to 9-11. And so for about 18 months, I was without a paycheck. I had a mortgage to pay, I had a family to support. I sat down with my wife and I said, it was a nice run, thanks for supporting me. It was the hardest thing to, to verbally say, we knew it was gonna happen, but I said, but we gotta give up TV, we just not, it's not working. And um, I had a friend who always said, if you need help, call me. I called him and in 2002, I became a mortgage lender for Washington Mutual Bank. It was actually early 2003, I got a call at my desk. We're doing some poker this year. We saw you did the last poker show on ESPN, and can you do this one? I was doing some other work for ESPN because I knew I knew one of the big programming guys there, so he's paying me to be a consultant. So when they decided to do more poker for the first time, he thought I was more of a poker player than I was. I think he thought I had, you know, like I was a gambling degenerate. And I said, you know, I gave up TV. Um, I really don't know if I can do it, if I have the time or if I want to get back into it. I then mentioned to my best friend the next day, he goes, what do you have to think about? And I told him, well, it's poker on TV. What the heck is that? Do I want to do it? And he said, let me remind you, you, you really have no career right now. I said, yeah, that's not a bad point. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Las Vegas, Nevada, and Binion's Horseshoe Casino. I'm Lon McCarran, along with tournament player and sports columnist Norman Chad. How we got to be who we are wasn't developed. 
I was new to the game, and so I'm trying to bring out from him uh, what poker is all about, what's happening, so the folks at home can understand it and enjoy it more. He might have noticed pretty early on that I knew nothing. I had absolutely no idea of what we're doing, not just poker-wise, but television-wise. You have to be a stone-cold moron to sit in the first row of the featured table for a long enough period of time that in a hand they had to show that I'm in the background. I ended up enjoying wandering the main event floor, finding stories. I think I have a decent knack for doing that based on my journalism background and my reporting background. It was more about telling stories rather than just a poker competition. And I knew something special in sports television, but I wondered how many people were going to really take notice of it. This could be the last card of the 2003 World Series of Poker. It's a five. Yeah! When the ratings came out, they were jaw-dropping for poker on TV. And then when I really knew it was going to be a hit was after the second, third, or fourth week, because the ratings kept climbing. When the shows started airing from 2003, I think we did six shows. ESPN aired almost 1,300 hours. You couldn't walk in anywhere that ESPN was on without seeing Chris Moneymaker and Sammy Farha. Hello, everybody. I'm Lon McCarran alongside Norman Chad. I'm Lon McCarran alongside Norman Chad. Lon McCarran along with Norman Chad. Hi, everybody. Lon McCarran with my longtime broadcast partner, Norman Chad. To prepare for a tape show, there are a number of steps we have to go through. The first thing is that we get a paper copy of what hands are going to be used in the show. And he's sitting in his home, and I'm sitting in my home, and I'm taking some notes, and he's taking some notes. And then we come in to the production studio a couple days later, and we do it. OK. Welcome back to Las Vegas here on day seven of the main event. Every pot and so Antoine Labatt is wondering if his scarf is too dressy if he goes to Chick-fil-A on the dinner break. Labatt. Yeah, you put that in my mind. Don't blame me. Mind. Just pop in and change my little thing on the diary there. And then we got to make these little corrections where we're making these tiny little things, two words that we go in there and just say, on the river. All right, good. Is that good? On the river. OK. This is a job? There's a lot of acting involved when we get into the booth, and because we do know what's going to happen. And we both have some sort of mental illness, I'm sure, that makes us forget that we've already seen it. <laughs> so it feels and actually is fresh to us each time we do it. So it comes down to the river. He's going to need a nine and a nine only to stick around. And the river card is a nine. And he will double up and stay in the main event. I love a good river card. River card is a heart. <laughs> Originally, I thought whatever I said something, it was a one-off. Another kid with a dream. Ah, he's a kid with a dream. Ah, he's a kid with a dream. 56 years old. Not a kid. But with a dream. <laughs> the failed marriage thing, actually, it just became natural to adapt it uh, in 03, where I was, I was 0 for 2 for marriages at that time. Uh, had not taken on my third marriage, which right now is still good, so I've improved my percentage to one for three. Yeah, nothing worse than getting there drawing dead. Memories of my second honeymoon. <laughs> I think it's cool, and they're funnier than you. <laughs> the comedian Louis Black and Norman are similar in this vein, and I think they have inverse magnetism. That's what I'm going to call it, because they're grumpy, they're cynical, and it, it can be directed at you, but people want to be around them. Yet Norman is not a people person. He'll tell you he'd rather be with dogs than humans. It's beyond your capability to understand what I'm going to say. <laughs> so yeah. Uh... He says that. I think we're better friends than we really are. And that's what it is when, you, when you're with Norman. I have visited him in LA when I'm down there, and he's come up to uh, Northern California and has not visited me. <laughs> I feel very lucky to be teamed up with Lon. We got along together, and we, we, got, we came together as a unit as far as what we were doing. So we had a natural chemistry, even though we had no background with each other. I get knocked for my fake laugh, but they're not fake laughs. I genuinely am very tickled by what Norman says. France hasn't been this on edge since they couldn't find the front door key to the Louvre on opening day. <laughs> Sometimes I say this to people and they think I'm ungrateful. If poker didn't come along in, in 2003, I have no idea if I'm better off or worse off now. I do feel trapped now, and I've tried to get other work the last couple of years. Even when I write my newspaper column, which I've written for more than 30 years, when someone first gets exposure to it online, they go, what does this guy know? He's the poker guy. I would love to work for Golf Channel. I did the Tour de France one year. I'd love to get back to that. But as far as just being 
the guy doing the poker, um, I'm thrilled. I woke up this morning thinking how lucky I am that I have this job, I have this opportunity. If it were up to me, I'll keep it going as long as I can uh, live and breathe. I have had a, a rule in my life professionally that's always good to switch what you're doing, whatever it is, every five years. So I don't know. I might be doing it uh, a couple more years, and then I'm done. I might be doing it five more years. I might be done by the time I'm with the sentence. You know, I might walk out of here and they say, you're done. I have no idea. <laughs> Thank you. I finally now can do something else. You can just step on the glass. Make it official. To Mr. and Mrs. Norman Chad, I'm Lon McCarran, and congratulations again from everyone at 441 and ESPN. We'll see you at the next Norman Chad wedding.